We're about to talk real quick, like about Tyler Perry's A Jazz Man's Blues. Okay, it's out on Netflix. If y'all haven't seen it, you might want to go ahead and check it out. It's about, let me see how they, they worded it, okay? About what it's about. I mean, let me scroll up a little bit. So they say that it follows an investigation into an unsolved uh, murder unveiling a story full of uh, forbidden love, deceit, and a secret, all right? And from what we saw, it looks like this, the story takes place somewhere in South Georgia, 1987. And I don't know about y'all. But I was kind of, I was like, how is this was looking like that in 1987? I don't know if that was the proper no, no, year. You're talking about, it was 1937 well, it was 87. at the beginning of the movie. Oh, yes. Yeah, so it was 87 when the, when the uh, what's the young man? The son, the guy that ended up being the son when the oh, woman yeah. had it made yeah. walk to him. So maybe that was 1987. Because yep. yep, I was like, was. this hut it's not it y'all it was a really good episode about these two individuals you see here the guy on the photo is called bayou the light-skinned woman the mixed woman the mixed woman her name is bucket and we see eventually where she end up passing to be a white woman but she kind of caused them quite a bit of trouble i'm not gonna go into full detail about the um about the movie but i wanted to get you ladies thoughts about some of the characters i wanted to know your thoughts about Buckets, like just the movie in general, by by you, you know. I feel like Bucket was full of, sh yeah. you know what I'm saying, because she knew the danger she was putting him in later on in the movie, and she didn't really give a damn. But at the same nope. time, it was like he didn't care either, and it was just so many complications with Bayou because he didn't know how to read. His pa family wasn't really trying to teach him anything. He was an outcast within his own family. His light-skinned brother got treated better than him. And the light-skinned brother had a lot to do with him getting clapped at the end of the damn film. It was just a travesty. But my girl was sissy, loved sissy, um, wished Hattie Mae, the mama, would have stood up a bit more for her son. I don't know why she didn't, but I didn't like that part. Daddy was full of shit. What are you ladies' thoughts about the, uh, the movie? Um, I wished I would have never watched it, uh, first of all. Mm -hmm. Because if I would have knew how it was going to be, I wouldn't have watched it. Um, I am tired of watching Rosewood, Emmett Till, Kill Black People, String Them Up by Trees movies. Like, I ain't gonna lie. I'm like literally tapped the fuck out. Like, and I feel like I don't know why Tyler Perry needed to tell this story so badly. Um, but it was well done. Except for the fact that, and I know you said characters, but I need to go back to this because I don't understand. Mm -hmm. The beginning of the movie, somebody says, you want me to investigate this? Then we go into the story. We get to the end of the movie and the person who said they wanted to investigate it, we never saw them again. We never saw an investigation at all. And we just see at the end when Bucket's son figures out that he ain't mayor he ain't the mayor's son like basically which we all knew like don't be in here scared about spoilers because go to hell um you wish you 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 listen this is one of the movies where you should have as much information about the shit before you watch it as possible and then still watch it if you want to but you should absolutely know what had happened okay because it was it was just triggering on, on a like y'all the whole fucking movie gal like the okay. whole fucking movie, bro. You, Gail. Just constantly mm -hmm. having these moments of, you know, being oppressed for no reason. And then to have Lee Ann pussy ass try to slap sissy in the face because she was <laughs> mad. Now, am I, am I to understand? Sissy was by you like sister. a sister. No, she wasn't. But she was okay. like a sister to Bayou. Okay. Yeah, she was like a sister. Yeah, I still like you thought you was gonna be able to put your hands on that lady. That was the best part of the movie. The best part of the movie, and the only thing worth seeing in the entire movie was watching Sissy backhand slap the dog shit out Leanne. Who okay? name is Bucket and got the name because her own mixed mama didn't even want her, dropped her off to her granddaddy for her to even be violated by the granddaddy. Mm -hmm. Only for the granddaddy to realize that Bucket was taking a liking to buy you and then snitches on their relationship but then also goes as far as to lie about him violating her saying buy you yes. violator 
the daughter when it was really him that had been doing that the entire time. So the mama left, took her daughter, what, she up north, I guess North Georgia, but brought her back down at some point later on in life, back down to Hopewell because her mom was at a place where she ran off with a man. The man didn't want her, so she was using her daughter as a cash cow to bring in some money for them. So she, she set her daughter up with the mayor the mayor was white they met in college so she started passing as though she was a white girl even though that's not what she really wanted her mama kind of forced her into it but what i couldn't stand was her never being able to stand up for herself the entire movie but you that had the part. audacity to stand up to sissy because you was jealous of a relationship that wasn't even a relationship I didn't, mm -hmm. I couldn't, that's what I could not stand. Like you standing up to the wrong people. You couldn't stand up to your husband. You couldn't stand up to nobody else. And you the one with the money. So why you ain't run off with him when you had the opportunity? You continue and to sit of, there. And Bayou, Bayou at the end, him deciding to go back after the white boy told him, I'll go back and get your mama myself. And mm -hmm. you still wanted to go back and play a show like they wasn't gonna come and round up them boys to come and get you the only thing that take them a long time is going to pick up all them niggas before they come and hang you up from a tree and then you thought that you was going to be able to have a conversation with them you know what killed me a bit as he's sending money to the mama you know the uh the mailman Ooh, kept taking girl. money out the out the mail but here's the thing this, this the part that i'm getting to is why did the mama feel so compelled to stay where she stayed why did you not leave your husband had left you the big brother um the oldest son left you then of course bayou was forced to leave you so why didn't you just uproot yourself and leave just go with, with your kid yeah since you so That's concerned about too. him too that didn't make but sense. you know what i noticed at the end so when the movie first started and we see the lady coming and saying investigate this here's all the letters i was thinking that that was leanne so at the beginning, I was like, okay, something's going to happen to make me like Lynn. And then once I actually watched the shit, I couldn't stand her ass. And it just reminded me, like, she very much was using her white privilege the whole time. And then after this man then died, all you sitting there doing is crying. And that's her it. That's all you did the whole time. You just cried. And then when it came to actually investigating who killed by you, you still didn't do nothing the whole time. His mama had to be the one to advocate for him, another black woman. So it, it just pissed me off. Um, I thought it was a really good movie. I don't feel like he needed to add the part in about the grandfather violating her because I remember when they first introduced the grandfather and he held that knife to buy you, I was like, Lord, please don't tell me you're going to add this into the movie. But Same he did. Thing. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't want him to. It was it was a good movie, but trauma porn. Yeah, yeah. it was. Yeah. It was, and it was a different type for me because you know we used to seeing people tower on folks when that is happening. This was different because she was bent over and he was doing whatever, and it was just so clean. Like I just, I couldn't, I couldn't. That was a lot. I, and and she could have ran at any moment. But see, this is the thing. I I feel you on that, Nisi, about why you included. Because it served no point at a later time. If right. he wasn't going to get his justice, then what's the point? I felt like this movie should have been a series. Because I feel like we got about six more episodes we could have did on this. Where we could have got some type of justice or something else for Bayou or whatever. So I feel like we could have had this a little longer. Like he actually, from what I read, I saw a little snippet. They said that Tyler Perry wrote this back in of 1995. Course. And of he's course. been holding on to it for a very long now. time. And he did a great job with, you know, delivering. It's just sad that neither one of the characters really, like, nobody got anything. Nobody want, got anything that they wanted at the end of the episode, except for her main GS, Mama. Have y'all seen Passing on Netflix? I don't think I finished that. I, I started watching Passing it, I reminds it. me so much of this, but it's told from a different point of view from the lady who is passing. And, uh... I don't know. Y'all want me to spoil it for y'all? Tell y'all. Yeah, please. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So in passing, it's two black girls that grow up together. One ends up leaving and takes on the uh, life of a white woman. Um, while the black lady still has a successful life as a black woman, she married to a black doctor and everything else. So the girl who ended up passing we ended up being jealous of the black girl because she wanted to go, she didn't want to live a lie no more. So she spends all this time with the black community. Her husband ends up finding out. And at the time that her husband finds out, she had a party 
and she ends up jumping. Well, you never really know if she jumped to her death or if the black girl pushed her out the window. But I really think that the girl jumped to her death because she would rather be dead than to pass as a white woman. So it's similar to this, but it tells it from a different point of view where I'm like, damn, you really learn more about the woman who's passing. But in this movie, this girl was passing so hard that she was like, you know what? I'll just live in misery for the rest of my life. And that's fair enough. That's that's not fair enough. That's not fair enough. Right. And I I just hate it. I don't know what was going on with her mental. They messed her up so much. She could have left at any moment. And she like you the one that got the means to go. You got the money. Like Mm -hmm. you can run off and go be with him. But you did it. And then you got Sissy doing the dirty work. Now, let me get to the super chat. And I got a quick question and we'll move on. Thank you so much, Lisa, for the super chat. It was the toxic trifling brother. Agreed. He told the sheriff he was back. That mm-hmm. was messed up. I knew it was going to be the brother or the white mm-hmm. man. But it, met, it ended up being both. Some people felt as though the most problematic person of the movie was Sissy. Because Sissy knew the dangers. Even if Leanne didn't, Sissy knew the dangers. So she should have never took messages that um leanne gave her to give to bayou and vice versa you know when he came back gave her a message for her to meet him on the bus and all that or whatever so what are y'all thoughts i mean do you think that's because i didn't think it was sissy's fault but what, what it wasn't sissy's that? fault i think mm-hmm. that's very refreshing for y'all to find a way to blame the black lady that's very refreshing thank y'all for trying something new this time i'm being facetious that's what y'all always do y'all always blame the black lady y'all not gonna blame the dumbass nigga who wanted to be with the white girl anyway y'all y'all because he she he knew better he knew better when she started passing he knew better i don't give a fuck about sissy bringing no letters back and forth you knew better on top of that she knew she could get him killed they kept she could get killed her and her mm-hmm. mama could have got killed if they got found out that they was passing. And she still did all of the shit she did because the dick was so amazing. Okay, we get it. She should have right? told them she was black, though. But that's the thing. Did you notice when she told her mama, I'm going to tell, and she said, they'll kill us, she hushed up. But then you still risking this man's life by by being with him. So it's like, okay, you want to play that game when it comes to him. But whenever your mama, who's really the evil person... You should have found yourself and stood up against your oppressors, which was your grandfather, your mama, and the white mayor that she was about to marry. Yeah. And yeah. you should have took that chance. And that's what the movie should have been about. And you know what else? When I think about that, it makes me think about how the mama lied and said, oh, well, I saw him blow kisses, giving the little Emmett Till type thing. Mm-hmm. Like I saw mm-hmm. him blow kisses he whistled at her. At her. Mm-hmm. And she acts like this is what killed me so much. She acted like she was about to get in the car and drive to him and warn him, right? Yeah. Only for her not to find the keys. And I'm thinking she's going to run around the house and, and go off to get Sprint. him. She done ran into the damn house and we see Sissy running back. I said, how the hell Sissy made but it to the house? Black woman. You Cause Sissy, no, because Sissy left when they pulled up. Sissy heard the conversation and, and then, she left while they were still talking. Her slow ass went back was. into the kitchen and realized that Sissy had already left. So she yep. figured that Sissy went to ah, tell him. Tell, oh, okay. Yeah, I that makes sense. That, that piece, mm-hmm. I just said together. I was with Jamie. Me. I was like, she took her, her ass in the house and said, oh, well. And no, she went, she went to say, Sissy, you got to warn it. Like, she went to tell her to go tell him. And, mm-hmm. you know, but she had already left. She was already gone. I ain't that song, I y'all. mean, an excellent y'all. movie. Made me feel, that's for sure. Like, oh. I... I watched it before I went to bed and I was like, I'm not going to bed without finishing this. And when I finished it, I was like, damn, now I gotta gotta uh gotta go to bed after seeing this. I had to watch right. something else. Nigga had to put on something fun and light. Like nigga, put on Abbott Elementary or some shit. Fuck. <laughs> right. Facts. And then Willie Earl. Um, he was just trash ultimately. He had his drug and I, I blame by you. By you and him both yep. had a drug. Yep. I blame by you. By you, you should have left that nigga to OD in that hotel room. I don't know why you took him with you. What the fuck was the point of that? I was waiting on him to OD the whole time. It's crazy how you got him up, dressed him, brought him home to make sure your mama saw him, and then he soon as he get there, he made sure that you the one that get clapped. Mm-hmm. All out of jealousy, and he was jealous of you the entire time. But again, they both had their vices, they both had their drugs. His was heroin, and Bayou's was this white girl. Because I, for the life of me, could not understand why he was so compelled to be so focused on her when you never really had like a full relationship with her for real, for real. Like, no. how do you stop your whole life for this girl? How do you not and find she, and new, she moving new on girls? With hers? 
Like she found another guy. So you ain't never found another girl. He never messed with nobody else. That's the dumbest shit I've ever seen. And he was on, <laughs> I guess you could say, kind of like Broadway, whatever. He was doing his show. Right. All and you them ain't shows never, you did, you ain't All them no beautiful way. girls. Come on, bro. Stupid as shit. Oh, child. Yeah, it was a situation. Y'all got to watch it, honey. It was good. It was good. It was good. I'm going to go ahead definitely and move didn't on. didn't give you the love feels. Definitely didn't. It wasn't giving love story. I Not thought he all. was going to try and rescue her once he saw that about the dad. This is another. I got to say, I'm I promise y'all I'm going to move on. It was him getting on the bus talking about how uh, I've been running all my life. I can't run no more. Yep. This is the time for you to run. This yep. is the time for you to run. Now you want to face a mob? They yeah, face so a mob. He walked up to the mob like, "Can we talk about?" Hear me this? out. Hear me out. What? Hear he me said, out. Nah, I ain't gonna hold you, but I'ma hang you. And I just hate it. For I hate that happened. I hate it. I hate it. By it. it was good. He did. Tom Perry did good. It was aggravating he that he didn't even want the security. Like he really was not taking that shit seriously at all. He felt so untouchable. Or, or did he not really care? Maybe that was another level of how he wanted to show and prove his love, that he's willing to, un you know, get killed for her. That's dumb. After she introduced your baby to you. But he's done so much dumb stuff that I wouldn't... <laughs> Hold on. I'm sorry. I got to say another thing. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jamie Carter, for the super chat. Worst love story ever. Worst. Is. Did y'all not think, in my mind, whenever he said he was going to come get her, when she looked at that baby and said, we're leaving, I was thinking, bitch, leave the baby. I thought that only because the baby looks white. So how are y'all going to make it anywhere with not only you looking like a white woman and passing for a white woman, but your baby looking like a white baby, too? At that time, I didn't know it was his baby. But I thought she was trying to bring the white man baby to buy you. And I was like, yeah, nah, y'all don't want to live. Um, I don't know. I thought they probably would have been able to get away with it up there in Chicago. I thought it would have been not common, but slowly getting there. I suppose nineteen. No, nah, that was way 19, before nineteen eighty seven. No, nah, that wasn't gonna work. Forty seven when he died. Nineteen forty. Yeah, that wasn't gonna work. That wasn't gonna work. Mm -hmm. That wasn't gonna work. But y'all make sure y'all go and check it out. Leave y'all thoughts and comments down below for the people that's watching uh, the show that's not live. Okay.